Reese is actually wearing a Canadian Politics is Boring t-shirt. I am. I'm, I'm jealous. It's cool. This is, oh, this is going to be a strong show and I can feel the energy. Welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring. Hello and welcome to a very, very special episode of Canadian Politics is Boring. I'm Reese. I'm Jesse. And um, well, yeah. I, what, 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 what do we have for us today, Reese? I have a friend from the UK, John. Oh, is this going to be one of those <laughs> special episodes where we have a guest on? It is John. Oh boy. Yeah. Welcome, I'm just going to keep talking over John until he's going <laughs> to let John talk. <laughs> he's he's going to be, hi, John. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, how, how, how Uncle John. Is it he wants us to call him Uncle John? I believe. I, I feel the sort of you know that that friendly, that warm, welcoming Uncle John gives gives a real sense of community. So so I'm happy for Uncle John. Uh, John is fine. Um, wow. But I, whatever you, whatever you, whatever you feel, just just let it come out of all the holes. Uh, okay, Uncle John. I mean, from, Uncle John, every hole. Yeah, that's, Uncle, that's Uncle John, every hole. Mister Every Hole. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, John. Uh, is a very good friend of mine from back in the UK. You guys, it's... Okay, so I was going to mention something about that, because uh, you guys sound like you have different accents. Uh, well, you were from Newport, and I'm from the Valleys. Is that a difference? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and you live in Bristol. I live in Bristol now, but, I mean, that's so that's that's like not even Wales, but no. um, Newport is not that far from where Reese is from. Is that where you are but, now? You're in... I, I'm in Bristol now, so I, I left Wales about four and a half years ago, and I moved about forty-five minutes away. So I literally can just get in the car and go back any time, apart from this. Well, it's like no, no. no it, it's, in Wales, you yeah. drive half an hour, and there's a completely different accent. Well, it's like Nova Scotia. You know, you're in mainland Nova Scotia, and you drive. I mean, you drive half a day to get to Cape Breton, but in Cape Breton, it's it's incredibly thick and amazingly different accent than mainland yeah, yeah, Nova exactly. Scotia. So, so yeah, all right. I'll, I'll introduce John a bit as well. John, please, you, you are a uh, famous comedy rapper. From the, yeah. the, the group Goldie Looking Chain, but also we worked together on the Unexplainers, the comedy yes. mystery road trip podcast for years. The, the smash hit uh, BBC radio series that took the, the UK by storm. It did. Um, and, oh, and some over, parts of America. And some parts of America. Over 18 people listened. Which exactly. I'm incredibly proud of. <laughs> and it, which um, eventually became, a, we did a live show on stage at a comedy festival and a TV show. Yes, it, it did really well actually, and I I loved wow. doing that. That was with uh, Mikey Bubbins, who who uh, presented it with me as well. Who sadly uh, no longer and, uh, with I, us. I'm joking. He's still alive. <laughs> he's still alive. He's he's fine. He's absolutely fine. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's really good. I don't know if, if you can still if you can access the um, BBC Sounds app. I don't know if you use uh, something to bypass it because you're in another country. I, I don't know. How, I have no idea how technology works. But there, all the series are up. On the um, the BBC be- uh, Sounds app at the moment, so you can you can check it out. And yeah, we got to check out everything from poltergeists and ghosts to time travel, and meet real people who'd experienced these things, and then get real scientists to debunk this is, them. This is the unexplainers. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Right. My my favorite yeah. episode is when we went to look for Bigfoot in Wales, and we didn't find him, but we played. Or you played through a speaker. In the middle yeah. of the mountains, in the middle of the night, the sound of uh, a rutting tortoise. Um, yes, and it was uh, it was one of the greatest moments. Of my did life. you do this with your mouth? Like it just no, no. He had the sound effect, and they go like, "Do you do the noise? What the noise do they make?" The actual it goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, he's not making that up. I've heard <laughs> it before. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they sound that's like. A yeah, tortoise. That's a, yeah, 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 that's <laughs> amazing that you've practiced that enough that you know exactly how to do that with your mouth. Burned that's, in, that's burned into your mind said. once you've heard it. That's yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Speaking of uh, mouth noises, I have a, I have a quick announcement to make. Yes, about so I, I as some of our listeners may know, uh, I clear my throat a lot, and it's something I'm aware of, and I'm trying to stop, and I'm trying to to help <clears throat> as like that. But we had a comment recently on on Apple Podcasts, uh, a review about this guy. Now. Before I go on to explain what this review had to say, I just want to state out loud that I am not, what's the word I'm looking for? It's uh, stupid. I am, 
I am not Dying. fetish shaming. Fetish shaming? No, no. In fact, I would say I'm, I'm fetish encouraging. Okay. So this, this man listened to our podcast. He came back for season two and he was so distraught with my clearing of my throat. And uh, now I have like, I have nasal drip and whatnot. I'm working on it. But like, he was so distraught that he went back and spent time and wrote down every single time that I cleared my throat. Now, I don't know about you, but Who typically did, we when don't. When did that happen? I didn't see that. Well, yeah, you sent it to me. It was just a, it was just a comment. They didn't write down every time you. Yeah, did. I'll bring it out. Of my, they? Uh, yes, they, that's exactly what he said. He wrote it down. Like he literally wrote down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's I mean right? that's dedication from a fan. Uh, don't I, I look at it as a positive thing. Well, no, if that, someone, that's, that's someone, what I'm saying. If someone's spending that much time listening to my, thank my, you very much. Right, my mouth noises. To me, that tells me that they enjoy listening to my mouth noises that much. So, sir, if you're listening. I don't know your, your name, just your nickname on that, but send us an email, Canadian Politics is Do you boring. Do you know it's a sir? At, is it, could it could be a, be a ma'am. Yeah, at gmail.com, Canadian Politics is boring at gmail.com, and I will personally give you an hour of just Jesse mouth noises. And that's it. No talking, just clearing my throat, sniffing my nose, various other gurgles just for you. Because I know it kind of gets you going a bit. Otherwise, you would not have spent so much time kind of counting them. That's so fair. that's Sounds just, fair. this is what I do for my fans. Yeah, there we go. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, <It's> starting now. <laughs> uh, John, we we're here to talk about a very special subject. So, um, uh, John, you live in the UK still. Yeah, as far as uh, it's falling apart as we speak, it's 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 a bit like Mad Max at the moment. Um, Physically falling apart, like driving. an apocalypse. Yeah, the whole thing's just a complete mess at the moment. Uh, it's 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 a sort of living hell, but but, but you've got to have a laugh, you know. So uh, <laughs> hopefully we can. Uh, I'm assuming can this has to do with joy. Brexit, which I know very little to nothing about. Oh uh, well, yeah, Brexit basically means there's there's no food, and you can't you can't actually ever leave the country again. And uh, oh. by all accounts, the government are introducing uh, weapons to every household, and, and we will have to f- fight to the death um, in order to survive. Sounds like a British so it's, it's, Okay, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's, it's I, like mi- I missed games. it. I moved to Canada three years ago, and I'm missing all the fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's really getting good. I, I've put a metal spike on the front of my car. Uh, so that, that's cool. Um, well, we're here to talk about the person who is leading that uh, that chaos, Boris Johnson, <laughs> Prime Minister, yeah, Supreme well. Leader of the UK people. Cool. Um, I actually, I, I'm, I'm, I have to admit, I know nothing about Boris Johnson as as goes our show, Reese. I know nothing about whatever you talk about until you talk about it. So I'm excited. I thought I thought it'd be fun to introduce Boris Johnson to the Canadian audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and and also, then enjoy this. Yeah, enjoy this. He's got like a crazy mop of hair, doesn't he? That's that's, that's, pretty, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Pretty that's all I know him for. And he has something to do with Ima- Brexit. Uh, imagine um, a potato covered in uh, bleached blonde pubes. <laughs> I, I think that's... Yeah, pretty much had, who's controlling our country. That's right amazing. That's a that's yeah. a very apt description. <laughs> and and just yeah. just as like America got rid of Trump recently, Boris Johnson's gonna be prime minister for at least another four years. Oh wow, really? Is that right? Yeah. He got reelected? Yeah. No, no, he's just he's he's just started. Oh. Like in the last few years. That's right. He's 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 gonna be in for a little while. And uh, that, by all accounts, even his own party members are, are looking at, at sort of having a bit of a a bit of a word with him. I don't know how much of a word they're going to have. I mean, by word, I mean, alley. you know, take a shotgun to the back of his head while he's driving home. But but that's, that's just my... I wasn't going to go that far. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> like he was doing it to I other would. people, I think. That doesn't make it okay. <laughs> it's so it's just his own stuff. I, I was going to start at the beginning with... So his full name is Alexander Boris de Feifel Johnson. De, oh, hold on, what? Alexander Boris de Feifel Johnson. Can we can we just call him de Feifel as a nickname or Feifel? Like Feifel goes Feifel goes west. Except <laughs> Feifel goes west. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so he is a politician, author, journalist, and has been Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and leader of the Conservative Party since two thousand and nineteen. Um, he was born on the 9th, June the nineteenth, nineteen sixty four, in the Upper East Side of Manhattan, New York, and he actually. Uh, had a dual citizenship between the US and the UK. Wow. Uh, which he had to, uh, he basically uh, abandoned his uh, US right to citizenship uh, to prove he was uh, loyal to the UK. And also he got in a bunch of tax disputes with uh, some money he inherited because he was supposed to pay tax in the US and the UK. And uh, he didn't want to. He did in the end, but... Okay. okay. He says he did, but I reckon he's... he's- 
know, he's a big lying git. He is a big lying git. Who knows? He's a yeah. what? Who knows? Sorry, a, I get a git. A, I'm oh, going to have to get you guys are going to have to explain all this weird a British git. shit uh, to me. Like a prick. Like a prick. Yeah, yeah. like a bell end. A bell end. Um, yeah. Arsehole. Um, a bell end, which I've know, just learned is the bell end of a penis, right? Okay. An asshole, yeah. A git. Yeah. Okay. There he's we a, go. He's a, a git bell end prick. All right. I'm there learning. We go. Yay. Good, good old British slang. This is, this is I'm learning British British swear words. This John, is fun. John, something you'd find really funny here is that people don't realize how offensive the word wanker is. It's not. No, in, and, not, you, know, not you know, you joke and you go call somebody, oh, you, you buffoon. It's, it's like almost like that. In so you can Canada, call, yeah. You could be in a business meeting and go, shut up, you wanker. And they go, <laughs> that's a British word. That's really funny. And I'm like, yeah, you wanker. <laughs> <laughs> How bad is it in Britain? It, it means, yeah, it's not very nice. There's an American guy who does a, a really high profile <laughs> evening show and everybody watches it. Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy yeah. Jimmy Kimmel, yeah. And we we got to go on the, the Jimmy Kimmel show years ago. Oh, cool. And um, That's I, very I think cool. We used, yeah, it was quite good. I think I, I have a feeling they didn't even put it on the TV in the end. <laughs> you just uh, you had a nice our, day at the studio, our, though. Yeah, basically, we, we our band was signed to Atlantic Records. So they did this thing where they send you around the world for no reason. And uh, <laughs> part of it was, was going on the Jimmy Kimmel show. We did this tune, and I think we used the word wanker quite openly there. Uh, they had no idea what it was. It's great. Either way, they, I don't think they did even show it on television in the end. It's somewhere on YouTube. But did you um, have a nice day there? But uh, I, I remember being out of my mind in a caravan, like a trailer outside. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, it was really hot. And uh, that, that's pretty much all I can remember. That's good. It. So uh, Rock and a great time was had by all. Yeah. <laughs> great your, your Uncle John's World Tour. <laughs> Just a blur. Yeah. So before we go on to uh, hear more about the potato with pubes, Mm. So that's how you aptly um, Why don't we tease our audience as to what un- we have uh, for Uncle, what, what Uncle John has for us later on in the episode so that they stick <laughs> around during the potato <laughs> part. Well, yeah, the, um, Uncle John has a new podcast out. Um, so it's not just getting your friends to come on the show because we don't have any other guests. We have actual, <laughs> he has a show that yeah, we're there's, promoting. There's a reason, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John, there is, John. there is a I, I, I mean, I, I've got very little to do at the moment and I am happy to, to fill any dead air. But, but there is, there is a, a, a reason uh, to be here. We'll, so, we'll play the trailer at the end. This is the tease. We'll play the, the trailer tease. at the end. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Should we, do you want to learn more about Boris Johnson? Yes, I do. Cool. Yeah, go on. Go potato, on. Yeah. potato fival. So uh, uh, he... In 1969, when he was just just still a kid, how old would he have been? Five years old? The family returned to England and settled in West Nethercote Farm near Winsford in Somerset. Um, mm, and his it dad, sounds so pretty. Yeah. Um, sound, yeah it was, his, his dad, they were rich. They were a rich family. He had a, 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 a really remote house. And his dad was never around. And his mother raised him with um, basically kind of nannies. Um, and he was described as quiet and studious. I thought you were going to say mm. stupid. But okay. uh, and his yeah. earliest recorded ambition was to be world king. Which is... King, what, what a king great world. ambition. World king. World king. What do you want to be when you I grow up? Task. World king. I think that's Leonardo DiCaprio on the Titanic, really. Yes. Yeah, but it, he... Um, I mean, he's, he's prime minister of the UK, so he's got like 1% of it. Yeah, he's getting there. Yeah. yeah. So far, so good, right? What did you want to be when you were little, John? Um, that's a great question. It's a, it's a good question, actually. Um, probably, oh, I know I wanted a giant r- rubber. Um, it was in the back of a magazine called Fangoria, which was like a horror magazine. They had this thing for sale called The Victim, which was a three quarters of a, a body. <laughs> what? Had, yeah, it was what? Three quarters three, of a yeah. body. Three quarters was, of a body. Yeah. Like it had the legs missing, but it had one arm. Uh, and it was all it was just a torso with an arm. Open. Yeah, a torso with an arm. And uh, I found this magazine in a bush and I took it home and I <laughs> pleaded with my parents, please, it costs, it was American. So it said, uh, I think it was $700. I was Jesus like, please Christ. can I have this for Christmas? Please can I have this for Christmas or all Christmas and combined birthday. But they said no. Um, <laughs> because they're good parents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was like, please can I have the victim? Please can I have the victim? And I cut what it out. What were you and planning on doing with it if they, if they gave it to you? Can you imagine? I would have just. I would have. I would have made short films. I would have uh, put it in my bed. I would have um, just 
slid down the stairs with it. It's all the stuff that a child does. Yeah, yeah, all, exactly. all, the, all the stuff a child does with the torso, that would have, a human that would torso. Be, that would be a great kids' TV show, Me and My Torso. <laughs> Yeah, so that's Me what I wanted to, to, to and have. And my torso. <laughs> Look at the blood fly. So there used to be a, a kids' TV show in the UK called Woof, and there was a little boy, and he would suddenly get an itch behind his ear, and every time it happened, he'd turn into a dog. And yeah, uh, that was a weird show, wasn't it? It was yeah, it was, it was quite good actually. It was. sort of like a sort of, sort of a very friendly werewolf that, that just. <laughs> He helps it like save the school fate, things like that. He, yeah, just to he quite briefly, nice he, he'd get like the local vicar's glasses out of the lake or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good job. I got these dog powers. Uh, yeah, there was. Good. Um, so speaking of of the torso that you wanted so desperately as a child, it reminded yeah. me of the film industry in. Oh God, it was a long time ago when I was told this. I'm going to say Brazil, but if anyone, if I'm wrong and, and any of our audience members actually knows what country this is, please email us and let us know. I think it's Brazil. The horror, the horror industry in, again, saying Brazil a, a while ago, maybe still today, although I doubt mm-hmm. it. Um, it was an honor when you died to donate your corpse to the local film ministry to be oh, used wow. In horror movies, I do that. What? Yeah, I, do I mean, that. Like, it sounds like something you would do, honestly. But like, that's if you wouldn't go and watch old horror movies from like, yeah, decades yeah. ago from that region. Apparently, the bodies that they're just chopping up and they're spewing about are real. Like, just oh. like get the family together. Look, everyone, there's Grandpa's torso just flunging about. Like, a... do do I donate my body to science for the betterment of human knowledge, or for a film to be film. blown up? <laughs> Yeah, blown up every time. <laughs> Put it in the film. Yeah, yeah. blown up every time. <laughs> uh, John, how would you describe Eton College? Eton is is a place. Um, imagine Harry Potter, physically the building. Uh, you know, very these sort of wonderful old, very established, old school um, uh, sort of society run by incredibly rich people who who what they do is they have loads of money and they pay for their kids to go there and then those kids get loads of money and pay for their kids to go there and then they have loads of money and they pay for their kids to go there and then what they do when they they leave or they they graduate as you, you say in that part of the world is that they then spend their time amassing more money and ruining everyone else's <laughs> lives yeah it's basically so, it, is, so that, it is the elitists the most elite of elite private schools Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. That, that's where, this is where that's Boris where, Johnson went, is it? Yay. In 19, bringing, us, bringing us back. 19, 19, <laughs> 1977. Um, and here, you know, you know his kind of eccentric English persona. So he's, he, when he talks, he sounds like he's out of, I don't know, like a, some kind of um, like little women or something. You know, I'm not little women. Yeah, little women. He like, this. Yeah, he's is that of, the, the the essentially the 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 plan is is to to ruin the entire world yeah uh, like using your um, impression um, of my, is good my mind that, that's how he speaks <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> hold on is this is this I, i've never heard boris johnson speak so is this an impression of him right now that you do yeah more or less and and what he likes to do is he likes to quote sort of um a lot of old sort of uh, like classic literature literature and and stuff from sort of um mythology and stuff like that and he tries to sort of impress people by talking about i don't know oedipus or, or you know something like that all and, right and so then, um, reese because i've never heard boris johnson speak would you say that was a fairly decent impression that was a good impression that was a good impression all right uncle john i have a request for you could you okay. in the voice of boris johnson describe to his wife the yeah. uh act of love making that he is planning on doing later on this evening yeah okay <laughs> The the uh the 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 balls the 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 cock and and, and balls will will be uh, massaged uh, repeatedly um, uh, and, until they they okay, reach maybe we've a, gone a, too far. A, <laughs> a, 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 a I'm gonna stop you there. So I, I, I regretted it immediately. <laughs> yeah. 
But the, the sound, yeah, it does, it does sound like it. Guy yeah, yeah. Is like, yeah. Uh, so, so when he when he was at Eton, he, he crafted this kind of eccentric English persona, which he's really famous for now. And apparently, at school, uh, all his reports complained complained about his idleness, complacency, and lateness. But he was well known and popular because he's quite entertaining. Which kind of is that describes everything about him today as well. He's a total court jester. He, he's the sort of bloke that, um, he, like I said, he's incredibly rich, incre- incredibly privileged. If you didn't know who he was and you met him in a pub, especially if if you came from another country where you had no idea about customs and, and society over here, you'd probably sit and have a beer with him. Think what a what a fascinating, incredibly funny, strange man. He must be the local idiot with a lot of money, and, and you probably have a lovely <laughs> afternoon with him. Yeah, I imagine never that. The, the danger is that, that this this bumbling idiot with an incredible amount of money is somehow controlling the entire country and we're fucked. <laughs> but, but, you know... Um, it's been going around a lot lately. Mm, mm. It's, it's fascinating. It's so, absolutely fascinating. So he, he purposefully cultivate, cultivates a shambolic look. So apparently he ruffles his hair before he goes out on camera. He does that on purpose? Yeah. To make his hair look, just, just to play the character. And his, his theory is that humour is a utensil you can use to sugar pill to get the important points across. Hold on a second, wait. Exactly. He's the, playing, uh, that, he's actually playing a character. He's crafted this up? character. No, yeah. But like for real, he's, he's... Yeah, he'll ruffle his hair up and go... Oh, blah, 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 he and does kind of, this on purpose. Yes. He, so that's not who he is. I think... I think he's I think, running think, the country as a character he invented. Uh, at least that's the persona he's crafted for in public or when he's on camera. Yeah. Oh, this I, is I would real? Agree with that as well. Yes, this is real. Yeah. The, the more you, you see him um, on television or, or being interviewed, the more you can see this this sort of, it's really strange and it's it's, it's really manipulative because you can see how he, he could just stumble into a room and, he, oh, let me shake your hand. Oh, I've fallen over. I have a bit of dog poo on my leg. Oh, you know, but, and all the meantime, he's, he's planning to kill your kids or something. You know, it's, yeah. it's okay. really... It, I'm, it, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my imagine brain if, Imagine this. Hitler. Well, he's not as... I have, I have an example was, that I was going to ask you. Well, like, imagine, say Hitler was... Every time he walked up onto stage, he fell over, and then like I don't know, he yeah, he had silly hair. Uh, I mean, he looked pretty stupid anyway in that uniform, but you know, and the goose step in and not everything else. But he is kind of like he makes himself so unthreatening and kind of cheerful, and um, it's almost like people you don't feel sorry for him, but you almost feel like he, he's undeserving to be too harsh to him because he does seem so bumbling and. Do you know what I mean? It's weird. Okay. It throws, it throws you off. Clever, yeah. it, it kind of hacks your brain into going, I, I he's a, not serious. I have a question. This is yeah. blowing my mind, by the way. Like, I'm, I, I, This is the first I've heard of this. Is this like Rowan Atkinson running the country as Mr. Bean? I think that would be, a, you'd do a better job. But is that what you're job. talking about? Like, is yes, this exactly yeah, 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 what's yeah, happening? Kind of, so the second question I have is, is this just how people are interpreting him doing this? Or is he literally doing this? Like, this is his, like... I know he knows exactly what he's doing. So, I think he's, he's, learned, he's learned as well, because, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Reese will, in his timeline of this insane man's life, We'll get to the point where he was a, a TV presenter for a while, which which I'm sure will, you know, I won't say anything until you get to that thing. But that was a, a key time in him becoming a bumbling idiot that everyone was sort of laughing at. But but like, yeah, hey, he's he's all right. You know, he's just a bit of fun, isn't he? And and you, I always thought, you know, myself that, OK, this guy's, a, I don't agree with his politics, but as someone who's just going to dick about on TV, all right get on with it you know but and <laughs> what happened after that was just a nightmare there's a there's a i've got a quote here i think it's by his biographer um and she said johnson is blessed with immense charisma wit appeal and celebrity gold dust he is also recognized and loved by millions or although perhaps less so by many who have worked closely with him resourceful cunning and strategic he can pull off serious political coups when the greater good happens to coincide with his personal advantage but these aspirations are really backed by concrete achievements or even detailed plans <laughs> so he is you know he, he knows what he's doing Wow. Yeah, it's um, very, very manipulative. And the other quote from her, he's, he is an original, the opposite of a stereotype, the exception to the rule, overweight and goosey fleshed. He is the antithesis <laughs> of an airbrush pinup. He resembles a human laundry basket and has a habit of forgetting to shower. It's so true. I always think, I mean, I, uh, for, for people, you know, in Canada or, or anywhere in the world who aren't too sure what he looks like, just refer to the 1960 uh, movie, uh, the Time Machine, H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, 
Uh, I think a lot of people have seen this film. Uh, at one point, um, our main character goes so far into the future, there's two races of people, the Eloy and the Morlock, and the Eloy are the peaceful uh, above earth dwelling humans and, and the Morlock are these cave dwelling monsters that eat human flesh. And he looks like one of the Morlocks. He um, does. I don't know oh, if you the get Morlock, a picture. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He looks exactly, but he's not as green. But besides <laughs> that, he, look, he looks like a Morlock. But also that massive that... rubbery Morlock. <laughs> the, the bumbling kind of like innocent ruffled haired persona that he plays who you know, gets a bit lost for words, and um, mm-hmm. if if you search, there's if you search on YouTube, there's there's footage of him playing rugby where he, with children, and he knocks the child over. <clears throat> um, there's yeah. footage of him getting stuck on a zip wire holding two British flags promoting that the Olympics, amazing. and they had to cut him that down. Was amazing. <laughs> Um, yeah. He purposefully, he's always riding a bike and looks really stupid yeah. on the bike and he'll fall yeah. over and he's just built this, he's like, whatever the goofiest thing he can think of doing, he will do it. And then yeah. it will just look stupid and ridiculous and it reinforces that idea that he's harmless and bumbling. And, and then he'll um, go behind the scenes and destroy half well, the country. Like. This is, well, this is it. Yeah. He's got a very nasty streak in him. And um, so apparently if you, if you insult him personally... Um, he has a really da- nasty side. So somebody, uh, apparently the, the Telegraph published an article um, about his personal life and he emailed the, with the editor at the time and it just said, fuck off and die. <laughs> yeah. At, at one point, didn't didn't he pay someone to beat a journalist up? And yeah. And they had the recording of him him on the phone wow. just saying, no, how, what can you do? Don't don't smash him up too badly, but, you know, yeah, give yeah. him a good beat. They, they drove around London like, looking for him to beat him up because yeah. he wrote a nasty article. And he didn't yeah. get arrested for that? No, he's he's rich nah. and he's posh, so they don't get arrested for stuff right, like that. No, they'll no, go, no. Oh, we're just having fun. And they go, yes, yeah. sir. Wow, because, right. No, because I know true. my place. Right, so, no, that's exactly yeah. what happens. Um, yeah. And uh, he, he hides his, yeah, so he hides his, his kind of ruthlessness, but also he's he's pretty racist. Uh, oh, lovely. He's pretty oh, homophobic, nice. too. Great. Um, oh, I forgot this bit, actually. His favorite movie is The Godfather due to the multiple retribution killings at the end. Oh, my God. Um, uh, oh my god i've got some i now have got some great examples of horrible things he said when i say great i mean great in the sense that they really entertaining for our show great great in the sense they give you a really idea of how uh horrible he is as a human being all right um yeah so uh he he's he's pretty divisive He's, he's, I mean, he's really personally responsible for Brexit. He was one of the driving forces behind it. Can you I- explain in 30 seconds or less what Brexit is for me and anybody else who doesn't so, know? Since World War II, uh, Europe has integrated in terms of trade and partnership with each other uh, in, in an effort that was promoted by the post-wartime leaders like Winston Churchill and everybody else to make sure that Europe never ended up at war with each other again because it happened twice before and millions okay. of people had died. And a, a kind of a path of friendship and trade and interdependence was planned. With all the um, countries within Europe. Yeah, yeah, 27 mm-hmm. countries. And mm-hmm. that was what was happening. And it was very good for everyone. It was kind of spread, genuinely spread in democracy and uh, helping stop corruption. And um, some right-wing people in the UK didn't like the fact that the UK was changing as a country because there was a lot of immigration from other parts of Europe and other places and convinced people that they should be terrified of that and that they should essentially vote and uh, if Britain left the EU could be like another great empire again um, and kind of went on that kind of nostalgia for the time when Britain was a world power and um, convinced just enough people to vote for it. Wow. And now there's no food on the shelves. Is that true? <laughs> did I, did I nail getting, that, John? Is that close? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's yeah, that pretty much says it. I mean, basically, before before this happened, it was really easy for businesses to to trade and for people to 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 cross the numerous amount of boundaries between all the countries and for for you know for life to to move pretty in a pretty slick way, you know. Um, but since this has happened, the, everything is just you get these reports every day about how things are changing, how they're going to change. And, and there is just been chaos here over the past f- few months, like truckers and, and uh, people, uh, long distance drivers and, and freight companies have not been able to cross the borders. And when they do bringing stuff back in is nobody knows how it's going to be done. They've been spending months telling businesses, get ready. We're leaving Europe, get ready. You've got to fill out the right paperwork. And every, Every single business is like, what is the right paperwork? And it seems to be they're like, oh, we don't know, but we told you to get ready for it. And so get ready. So, yeah, but I mean, it's just chaos. So wow. before just- Brexit, with our British passports, we could have 
moved to any of the other 26 countries. So Italy, Spain, France. Yeah. We could have mm. got jobs there. We could have retired there. We could have used the health system there. We were essentially mm-hmm. citizens of all those other countries. Um, yeah. And a lot of people used that and got to wow, immerse that themselves. amazing. And uh, uh, that's gone now because that was a bad thing. Are apparently. the rest of those countries still interconnected with yes, each other? Yes, they are. So they're laughing because they're going, hey, well, we're still having a great time. So someone who was born in Italy can move to any of the other European yeah, yeah. countries except for Britain. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, wow. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's Brexit. That's Yay. fun. And that's because of Boris Johnson laundry bag. Yeah, laundry basket. Laundry basket, potato head. And now now yeah. I'm going to read out a series of quotes that he said that is deeply offensive to so many people. Yay! Um, he called gay men bum boys. Jesus. Um, which hell. is because uh, he's a dick. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and also he called Muslim women... Was this like public? Like in front of a... F- this, uh, I think uh, he wrote... He, he said it and he's written these things in articles. He actually wrote yeah, in he, an article that... Um, is. Uh, Islamic women look like letterboxes or a bank that's robber. That's horrible. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, Jesus Christ. And he once labeled, and this this is this is his kind of Victorian racism that he draws on. So Victorian racism. So imagine Sherlock Holmes's racist cousin, the kind of things he would say. Um, so he, I, I don't even know where to start. Well, with I'll, that. Give, I'll give you an I'll give you an example. Okay. So he that's fair. He, he once labeled black Africans he met as pickaninnies with watermelon smiles. Jesus. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that but means it sounds either. Terrible. But it does sound terrible. Yeah. A watermelon smile is is, I, I, is a very sounds very offensive. Is that where you take like a a piece of watermelon and stick it like a I don't like know. an orange rind, but you stick it in where your teeth are, so you have a big I don't orange know, smile. But, it, but it's pretty horrible. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption, but we've got a quick message from our sponsors. We'll be back right after this. It's, yeah. Um, What is he doing? I'm under the impression that if you run a country, you're supposed to unify it somehow. Yeah. That's just a rough guess of what you're supposed to do. I mean, I I don't think so. I did look at what Trump did for the past four years of dividing the country, and they're doing great. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. and the, the one, well. I mean, is is he doesn't seem to have a very uh, he's not very woke when it comes to Africa. He said the problem is not that we were once in charge, but that we're not in charge anymore, which is a oh, which is quick. You hear pe- British people say stuff like that. They don't understand the terror of the British Empire sometimes. And I they, don't they understand the terror no. of the British Empire. Yeah. It's pretty bad, was it? Yeah, it, yeah it's weird because historically we we have this massive empire, one third of the world and half of the population. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow. look how powerful we were. It was great. Everything was in control then, but it's like, well, not really. We just basically smashed everyone and treated everyone like shit and stole everything from them, as empires traditionally always have. Right. You know? Yeah. The, the but we, should we just move on from that and just try and not do that again? That's fine. <laughs> that, that's fine. I you mean, know, Canada was some reason, owned by the, people, the Brits, pretty much. And, like, we we weren't really, they didn't really care. <laughs> They're like, yeah. no. With this yeah. cold northern tundra over there, they just think we are. Right? Yeah, exactly. it's like, yeah, you guys just do your thing as long as you know we own you. That's fine. You know, yeah. We're like, sure. Crazy. Meanwhile, we're like slowly taking over the world with our, our curling rinks and Tim Hortons. Timbits. Timbits. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do, you know, do, you, do you want to hear what he said about Malaysian women? No. But he, yes, he said they go to university to find men to marry, which I don't know why. What he's got against Malaysian women? It's a very specific insult. That's very specific. It's so strange. Yeah. Like um, it's, it's almost yeah. as if he had to do research to be racist. Like that's that's effort. I, I think he, <laughs> I think he did the classic racist research where you just look at something and then just basically say it's shit for no reason at all. I think that that was about as far as his research went. Um, oh, God. In, in the wake. In the wake of the London bombings, he questioned the loyalty of British Muslims and insisted the country must accept that Islam is the problem. Uh, and he said, what is going on in these mosques and madrasas? When is someone going to get 18th century on Islam's medieval ass? Jesus. This quote, which is a great way to unify the country. And most people after a voted terror. him in. Yep. He's really popular. Yeah. He had the, the biggest majority of votes since Margaret Thatcher in the 80s. Okay, so this this goes back to something I was saying uh, and have been saying for a long time about Trump. And I think this applies just as equally. Whereas Trump is not the problem. Boris Johnson is not the problem. They are the symptoms. Yes. 
You remove yeah. them, the people who voted them in in the first place, they're still there. They'll just choose somebody else. Like exactly. It. Yeah, it's there. The people, why are the people like this? How did the people get like this? What environments did we create in order to foster this sort of thinking? Whereas these people, there's enough of these people that would vote in imbeciles like this. That's yeah. the problem and always has been the problem. And that's what we should be addressing. But we're we're always, as a, as a, as a world, as a nation, these, these clowns, at the world stages are so loud and imbecilic and crazy that they're taking all the attention away. They're the dry yeah. and like it's working. It's amazing. You know, we're, we're doing an entire episode about one of them right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, um, in June, 26, <laughs> June, June, 2016, Nick Clagg, the former deputy yeah. prime minister described him as like Donald Trump with a thesaurus. <laughs> um, That's pretty good. That's a yeah. good and uh, he, he, he's got better control of language than than Donald Trump. He knows that's, more. That's he knows ten more words. Yeah, so <laughs> ten more words. Uh, and Conservative MP Kenneth Clark described him as a nicer Donald Trump. Um, oh wow! And Donald Trump acknowledged the comparison, saying that British people refer to Boris Johnson as Britain Trump, which literally nobody has ever said. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you call him Britain Trump? Do you have people in the pub calling him Britain Trump? Yeah, I, I, yeah, a lot of people. Oh, Britsy's doing all right at the moment, oh, isn't he? What with the uh, BT smashing the country up? Yeah, <laughs> BT. Oh, and my, BT my, does it again. Yeah. My, my favorite oh. fact about him, and this happened during the election campaign, he refused to answer how many children he had. He um, doesn't even know. He doesn't know how he many children. He doesn't even he's... know by all accounts. So, he, he spends his time this giant Morlock-based potato racist <laughs> man. He a spends his time. Potato. S- somehow seducing women yeah and, and what hold on I wait don't well know. successfully so well yeah he's, like he's, he's got four he's children pumping kids out yeah, yeah he's yeah. pumping kids out everywhere and he he refuses to sort of by all accounts to to admit as to how many he's got amazing i'm not really sure how many he's got because i'm not that interested in, in him as a person um but but yeah it's it's just who who seriously who regardless of who he is and, and what he does who would want to get touching that cheese because it's disgusting <laughs> <laughs> but he's according to wikipedia he's known to have four children with his second wife a fifth child from an affair and now a sixth child with his fiance who's a lot younger than him like half his age yeah yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, I really like there's what, I, I, i'm just lost for words i'm totally <laughs> lost for words did did you enjoy learning about boris johnson Oh, are we done? I yeah, that's, that's all of my... Oh, there's a ton more we could talk about. I'm Maybe. fascinated. I would have sit here for another hour and listen to this stuff. The, like, this is amazing. He's an endless font of entertainment and depression. Well, I was um, going to say, like, I'm, I'm a little sad that, that Trump is gone now because a good source of entertainment has left the world stage. But now we're talking about another we've got imbecile. Vic- Victorian Britain Trump. Right, yeah, Victorian Britain Trump. So let's, still, like, bring on the imbeciles. There's another one. That's great. So Google... Honestly, it's true, yeah. Like, you know, if you, you can now... Get onto Twitter, get on the internet, and start following British politics, and you will have a really good time. What? <laughs> really- uh, John, have a really good time. Uncle John, yeah. Uncle John. Hi. Uh, we obviously there was this ulterior motive for you being on the show too, not just because you're, you're a good laugh and we ha- we're you. having fun, but also because and I'm you- really I'm really digging your accent too, which is just slightly different from Reese's. That it's it's causing this weird stereo effect in my. My head, where I've got like one slightly different uh, British accent in one ear and well, another. John, another. John is from a Welsh city, and I'm from like a semi-rural mountainous area. I'm so <laughs> I'm telling you, I can so tell the difference. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, just yeah. tell by the accent. There yeah, is, okay. there, yeah, there is. It's amazing actually because it, it it changes dramatically throughout Wales. It's, it's you you want to try and get some North Walian people on here because I think they've got the best. Do, do your North Wales world. accent. Uh, friend of mine had uh, both his eyeballs ripped out. Uh, by an alien uh, um, came out of the sky and it was green and um, called itself Gary. It was really amazing. <laughs> that's, that's how North Wales speak. And that's I, love North it. I, I understood love North about North three of those words. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, can you do a Cardiff no. accent? Because Cardiff is a city that is like 20 minutes from the city you're from. Yeah, Cardiff, mate, is more like that, ain't it? You, you go to Cardiff and you have a couple of drinks like with our lads. And the next thing you know, you're punching someone in a ball bag, having a fucking fight, ain't you? But that's what it is, mate. Exactly. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. John, Let's John just is keep a, doing this. John is an accent encyclopedia. Get him to do another one. Uh, do, do, <laughs> can you do Glasgow? 
uh, Glasgow's more like that. It's like it's a bit more. It's more like more, a bit more aggressive, almost, isn't it? Like it brings it right out. Can right you do, out do middle class? See me right. What, what I did right is I went out. I got a, got a packet of crisps. Right, opened them up. Pulled them down my trousers, then scrambled them all up in my pubes, right? And got them all mashed up, then took a photograph, <laughs> put it on the internet, showed it to all my mates. Brilliant. Uh, that's that's close. I'm and that, blown so, away right and now. And now, just for the subtlety, can you do middle class Scottish? Hello. Um, it's very nice to see you here today. Um, I'm very excited um, to know that you've um, made the attempt to crush a packet of crisps into your trousers. <laughs> Um, but I don't think essentially we really want to see that kind of thing happening around here at the moment. So perhaps just take it to the back room and, and we'll look at that later. So this is great stuff. amazing. John, so John, <laughs> there are so many accents in the UK and John has nailed pretty much all of them. Can can you do There's, accents outside of the UK? I, yeah, quite a few. I, was, I spent um, yesterday pretending to be an Italian called Dominic. Just uh, <laughs> so <to> my, <laughs> on that <laughs> Let's hear a little Dominic. Uh, hello, it's a Dominic, a friend of Paolo. I'm happy to speak to you now, but only for a short time because I have a lot of things to do. I'm trying to organize a party at the moment. Which is going to be big. It's going to be for like four or five people, but I'm not sure if they can all make it at the same time. But if they can, I'm going to try and get the big house. And we'll go in and we have a good time. And, you know, it's going to be good. Do you think you could pull off a Newfoundland accent? Have you heard that before? See, that's a tough one if you haven't heard it's it. Hard. It's hard to do. Yeah, I know there's, there's a sort of like homogenous Canadian sound, but Newfoundland, I, I wouldn't know what the exact, um, w- what you would do for it. I don't know if I went for a, a sort of Canadian sound, but so... Uh, without without doing it, because I don't do a great uh, a great job of it, I'll describe how to do it. Picture you're on a fishing yeah. boat. I've, so I've said this before on our show. Picture you're on a fishing boat and there's not enough mm-hmm. hands to pull all the ropes. So you've got to take some of the rope and put it in your teeth. So your jaw is is locked in place. Your, your jaw doesn't move. Your lips can still yeah. move. Your lips can still move and form vowels, but your jaw doesn't move, and your tongue is at the back of your throat. <sighs> and you talk real fast, and you talk real fast, because you got to get the words out, because uh, you got to get that fish up. Got to get out there. Get out there. Make sure you're getting your, your pants ripped off, eh? Yeah, <laughs> make you t- take it out there and put a bit of rope around your neck and throw yourself in the water, eh? See how it, how it works out there. Something they, like that. It's, it's hard. Maybe, it's, it's, getting someone to do an accent yeah, if they've never heard it before. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That was a good yeah. go. That was a good John. try. Yeah. It was good. It was but, a, it was. <laughs> uh, anyway, Josh, should we play your trailer before we, we use every accent you've ever done? I'm, I'm happy yeah. to just sit here and listen to him, to listen to John do accents all night. Honest to God, this is a treat. <laughs> but yes, let's play John's T- no, trailer. Well, tell, tell us about the show first. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, Meet the Street it, yes. it is the the new revolution in podcast entertainment um, <laughs> created at a sheer boredom during lockdown. Um, obviously, I haven't been able to, to go anywhere to do anything. And I realized that when you're all locked in your house, it's all about watching your neighbors out of the window. And um, it, it can become quite fascinating. So so I essentially created this character called David Plimpton, who is a, uh, a retiree. He's in his 70s and he spends his time at home. Uh, speaking with his neighbours, interviewing them about their lives, what they do, what they get up to. And uh, David's a, a lovely man, but he gets slightly com- confused. I'm assuming you do all the voices? Yeah. So, hello, everybody. It's David Plimpton. And I'm very excited to be here today <laughs> to talk to you about my new podcast, which is a very new venture for me because I've never used a computer before. <laughs> but nonetheless, I've tried. And indeed, I've created this wonderful program called Meet the Streets, which I'm very excited to play to you and will be available on all podcast platforms very shortly, as soon as I can figure out how to get the floppy disk to work. <laughs> so that's, that's hey, hey, hey. I, I'm going to play the trailer. I'll play the trailer. Oh, all right, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Greetings and salutations. David Plimpton here, the next door neighbour you never knew you had. Until now. Like many people, the length and breadth of the country, I've made it my duty to get to know everything about the people in my street. Everything. And seeing as no one else is listening, I thought I could share it with you in the series of special programmes documenting all of the exciting things that go on in and around my neighbourhood. Each episode, there'll be exciting news updates. It's James Ruskin from the library again, Mr Plimpton. Just to reiterate regarding your query... Fly Fishing by J.R. Hartley isn't actually a real book. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I'll be keeping a keen eye on the community. Jill, I can see him. He's out there now. 
It's a, it's a 50 inch television. That's clearly not going to fit through anybody's front door. And most importantly, holding a series of informal interviews with people just like you. I am Adrian Nutley and I have the longest middle finger in Great Britain. Uh, it's the middle finger of my right hand. Great stuff. My, my name is uh, C.J. Wivell. I'm a fantasy author. I'm responsible for the creation of the, of the schoolboy detective Euripides Jenkins. Now that's magic. I teach people what the buttons do on a computer. How does it come on? How does it come off? What do I do with a plug? So if you like that, imagine the four or five other things I've got in store. So sit back, pour yourself a cup of tea, and join me, David Plimpton, as we meet the street. Until then, goodbye! Jill, I've finished. I've done it. I can come and change the bandages on your knee now. Don't worry about coming up the stairs. I'll come down to you. Is it off? <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> Yet another masterpiece. That's so funny, man. Oh. Oh, that's, that's, that's the joy of Meet the Street. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've made six episodes and I've got some of the some of the voices on there. Adrian Nutley is a guy called. Um, is it up Mark right now? Davis. It's it's the trailer is up at the moment, and it, it's it's just waiting to be verified for iTunes because you know you upload it to like whatever the, the yeah, main yeah, yeah. audio booth. Mm-hmm. What what what, what uh, date are you going to start releasing? Hopefully. So I think um, next next Monday, I think I'm going to put the first one up. If you go there at the moment, you'll, you'll just get that trailer. So from, um, from the end of January, beginning of February, it'll be available. Yeah. If, yeah. If people search Meet much. the Street. Yeah. You can look for, I think it's at Meet the Street one on Facebook or uh, I think it's at David Plimpton on, uh, on Twitter. I'm enjoying David, and- David Plimpton's Twitter feed. Um, <laughs> it's, it is literally yes. you playing the character of an old man who's never used Twitter before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, is, that is quite good fun because basically, I, I sent I sent a friend of mine the um, a copy of some stuff and said, you know, what do you think of this? He said it's great. It is basically you, isn't it? And I was like, yes, it, it is. It is me. <laughs> All of it is me. I'm totally inept at using technology and and I really have no idea what's going on in the real world. But I am fascinated by people with incredibly long fingers. And, and, and... I'll read you some of the tweets, Jesse. Um, All right, yeah. What exactly is a dot matrix printer? And do I need one to make a podcast? That's <laughs> a personal favourite. Was it take, was the one taking the internet by storm? I now have five followers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the one, uh, uh, just uh, no, no context in August, you tweeted, it's nearly ready. And that's <laughs> it. Yeah. I've been running it for a little while, so I've just been sort of putting bits up. The fact that you did all the voices in that in that trailer uh, still um, blows my mind. Uh, anybody who can do well, voices blows my mind. Adrian, Adrian Nutley, uh, CJ Wivel, and um, the computer guy are all um, comedians in their own in their own right. And they're they're really talented people so yeah john um uh meet the street available on yes. all the podcast platforms soon yeah very soon i think it's it's on the audio boom at the moment and it and then from there it spreads out to all of the other platforms and then they take a few days to say i'm just making this thing go on to here so I, within the next week or so i will <laughs> get the first uh episode up uh, and there uh, i've got some real treats for you there's um uh, one of my favorites is a uh, a, a guy in that trailer, C.J. Wivel, who's a, a fantasy author, who's written a, a children's adventure book about a, a character called Euripides Jenkins, who is a schoolboy detective with an incredible sense of smell. And uh, there's even an excerpt from the book within that episode. And uh, that's a wonderful experience. That was with a guy called Alex Lowe, who is, is I think, one of the, the funniest people in, in Britain. He's, oh, so you don't do all the voices. There was, those are rather, those are, in the trailer, those are actually other comedians? Th- those those last three at the end are, are other people, yeah. Oh, okay, I was um, thinking like, wow, this, you know, like Uncle John is really, really talented here. He's doing all these different voices. Yeah, and they don't like, Uncle, like, now, yeah. Uncle John could be anyone's uncle. <laughs> yeah. I also, remember when we used to pretend to be Christopher Walken in the car? That used to be fun. Do Christopher Walken. There. So these men Aww. walked into my home last night, sometime nine, maybe ten, I don't know. <laughs> and... Try to touch my face over and over again. <laughs> Disgusting. Outraged, almost. 
Uh, I have a I have a Christopher Walken story. Really? Oh, go on. It didn't happen to me. It happened to um, uh, my uh, son of the friend of my mother's. So it's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon sort of thing. But I forget his name. But this guy uh, was in a movie as an extra here in, I believe, Nova Scotia. Christopher Walken was uh, doing a movie here in Nova Scotia. This is years ago. And this guy was just having a, he, he would have, he would, you know, I don't know if you've ever been an extra, but there's a lot of waiting around, like a lot, right? And then they call you on set. Okay, you're going to po- walk from point A to point B. There you go. Okay, go off and have a, have a biscuit and just wait again for another three hours. And that's your job as an extra. You do a lot of sitting around. And on the first day, he's like, oh my God, there's Christopher Walken over there. And he could point to his other extra friends and he's, there he is, there he is. And Christopher Walken's walking across the set. And Christopher Walken, for whatever reason, turns his head and locks eyes with this guy. Okay, we're going to, I'll, I'll call him Bobby because I forget his name. I'm, I'm sorry, whoever you are, I thought I forget your name. He locks eyes with Bobby, right? And he doesn't know why because he doesn't know him. Then he just, Christopher Walken just keeps on walking and then just disappears. And I'm like, okay, that was weird. The next day he comes to set, right? And he's doing his that job as an extra or whatever. And he's eating some bagels and he's just waiting a lot. And, and there goes Christopher Walken again, down the set, way down. And then he turns and he looks and he locks eyes with Bobby again, right? As if like, as if he owes him money or something, right? He just, he just kind of stares him down and he, as he just keeps walking away and it's really freaking him out. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And the day three happens and Bobby's by himself and he's having a smoke and it's raining and Christopher Walken is walking around and he stops and he sees Bobby and Christopher Walken turns his whole body and just stares at him. And then he just starts like pretty much just walking, charging straight towards him. This is Christopher Walken just staring, barreling him down the, the stair, you know, as he's like just walking, just marching straight towards Bobby. And he, Bobby takes off running and never comes back. He doesn't, he doesn't quit. He doesn't tell anyone he's quitting. He doesn't tell anyone. He just gets so freaked out that Christopher Walken would charge barreled down at him for no reason whatsoever that he just takes off, doesn't tell anyone and never returns. That's wow. My, that's so we don't walk. know what his intention was. No idea. I'm assuming it was to bomb a smoke, but I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's good. That that's a good, good story, though. Yeah, I think so. Do you that know, is good. Uh, um, Tom Selleck. Somebody was telling me mm. here that um, he used to he was filming stuff here, and he used to bring his yacht and park it up in downtown Halifax on the waterfront. And they were in an Italian restaurant, and they went in there, and Tom Selleck was behind the bar, just helping himself to beer. <laughs> What? That's good. Yeah. Did you just let thief? him, or he just like fuck it? Who's going to stop I think, me? I think he was just like, "Hey, can I come and privately drink beer in this bar?" And they're like, "Yeah, go on your Tom." It's Selleck. Tom Selleck. You can do whatever Selleck. the fuck you want. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, Tom. Like, <laughs> I just was it like you'd have that sort of a th- like a you could have that sort of authority if you were a celebrity that like how much could you get away with right let's yeah. go to a restaurant with my wife and like you know i'm i'm bill murray or whatever and i'm and i'm just you know what i want to get a glass of whiskey i'm just gonna i'm not gonna ask anyone i'm just gonna walk behind the bar shove the waiter away pour myself a glass of whiskey yeah. and go sit down who's gonna who's gonna stop me like that's and if they say anything go i'm researching a role <laughs> That's yeah, the, yes, I that's get a card. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's oh. the way to do it. John, have you got have you have you got any good celebrity stories from your time on tour? I got some really good shit celebrity stories. Yes, uh, I once stood next to Paul McCartney. Nice. Um, did, did nothing to say to him, so <laughs> you know, just basked in his that, presence. That was good. Um, I once sat on the same table as Kraftwerk, and we had a meal. Who? Um, the German uh, electro pop band. Oh. Yeah, uh, that, that was quite good. And when we went to Japan, um, we had this this festival called Sonic Mania. And our, our dressing room was, it was in this big sort of events arena. And next to us was Marilyn Manson's dressing room. Wow. And there was a toilet that said, for Mr. Manson only. And Mike Balls, who's in the band, said, fuck this, I'm going for a shit in Marilyn Manson's <laughs> toilet. And he, he went... He went in to go for a shit and Marilyn Manson then came up to the door and, and, and as he was trying to pull the door, I think Marilyn Manson was coming out and he looked at Marilyn Manson, who was wearing, I believe, the full stage makeup at this time and uh, is incredibly tall anyway. I uh, just looked him in the eye and said, sorry, Mr. Manson, and turned around and walked off. <laughs> Like he was the head teacher. Because he was like, fuck this, I'm going to go and have a dump in Marilyn Manson's toilet. I don't care. What's he going to do? It, yeah, what's he going to do? And then he, it, it obviously didn't happen. Amazing. There's been a lot of just like 
being near, I saw Elton John. What was a do once, and, and Elton John and Bono were there. <laughs> and Bono punched my mate in the kidneys. Hey, like being all like, hey, all right, lads, Ray. And he pun- punched me in a sort of play fight way. And Alton John looked remarkably like the green blob from Ghostbusters <laughs> in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was shocking. And, oh, good. Uh, you also, you also I've, you, uh, John has this amazing habit of making up stories for magazines when you've been interviewed. What? Is that what you said about oh, it? You, you, nice you, to people. It's yeah, brilliant. So whenever you get interviewed for a magazine, you'll just make up fake celebrity stories and it gets published in print oh my god oh, that's so brilliant i'm gonna do that Which i'm, t- I'm you, totally you, stealing that idea the one you told it's i think brilliant. you told the journalist that you you spent all day with jay-z on his slip and slide <laughs> no it was it was it was, it was Kanye west he Kanye said west. Uh, what, how, how did you how did you go about recording the new album so we, we went out to la and, and we spent like a month with Kanye west in, in the studio um he he was um so enthralled by the idea of getting a like a slip and slide we just got that and we just we just played on that for a month and we didn't get anything recorded so we had to come home and, and record everything at home instead and we and we spent like you know 750 grand on doing it but it was a really good life experience and it's just oh, so many of those ridiculous things I mean, we, we did these things where like you, you oh. sometimes would go to like festivals and they'd quite often at festivals they'd be maybe backstage there'd be like a, a guitar and they'd get all the really famous bands to sign the guitar and then the guitar would go off and be auctioned for charity and you'd always sign it like John Lennon or Ringo Starr or something like that and that was always really good fun just writing fake autographs on stuff and seeing <laughs> it. it's for a good cause Which was, that, that, that reminds me actually this is nothing to do with meeting famous people but I went to a wedding once and I didn't know anyone there and the the couple getting married had this thing which was like a, a picture frame with just two bits of glass in it and then all these tiny little cork hearts and the idea was you were supposed to write something like uh, love will last forever congratulations on these hearts and then drop them in so it filled up this picture frame with all these cork hearts with memories in and i just wrote i will kill again <laughs> I, I love to think that that, that, is, that is somewhere on someone's wall somewhere. Memories that last a lifetime. <laughs> exactly. Did you know? You know did you know the like, couple, or were you just walking by? Uh, no, no. I, I was I was dating this girl at the time, and uh, she was a bit of a dick anyway. So. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 uh, John, thank you so much for, oh, for that was fun. helping me tease Jesse and the Canadian people about Boris Johnson and yeah. sharing your awesome stories with us. Well, if you if you want to have a good time, just uh, check out some British politics at the moment. You don't have to go too deep because obviously you will reach a point where you just want to put your fingers down your mouth and vomit and then eat the vomit afterwards to get rid of the, the horrible taste, taste of the map. <laughs> but, uh, That's what my dog does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look forward to to um, keeping up to date with what you guys are doing on the old uh, Twitter. And have you got a Facebook page as well? We no, do. We don't really use we it. Don't, yeah, we're mainly yeah. on Instagram because um, Instagram and Twitter. Instagram and yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah, I follow is, you on Twitter. Facebook is. I'll keep up to date. But basically, I don't, nonstop, I don't, yeah. a non-stop garbage can of burning hot garbage. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It's just, Ang- yeah. Anger and it hatred. Never, it never burns yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Well, John, well, we'll say we'll say thank you very much and good night. Um, and yes, thank you. It was fun and good luck with the new show. I will be listening. Thanks. As will the other guy. Meet the We'll be the, the two other guys listening. So this is going to be a strong show. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a strong show. Yes. Also, so. Good luck. Uh, good luck, good. Uncle John, and thanks for coming on uh, our show. Live the dream. Uh, always wash your hands. Don't smoke in bed. And. Uh, <laughs> Nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Great times, guys. Great bye. times. Oh, I like that. Oh, bye.